everyone welcome back to simply learns youtube channel today we are going to talk about descriptive statistics in microsoft excel and i will walk you through a step by step guide on how to perform this in excel but before we dive into that let's first take a quick look at what descriptive statistics really means descriptive statistics is all about summarizing and describing the key features of a data set it helps you get a quick snapshot of your data by calculating things like mean, median, mode, standard deviation, range, and more. These are essential to understanding patterns and trends in your data without having to look at every single value. It's the first step in analyzing data before jumping into more complex statistics. Now that we have a basic understanding of what descriptive statistics is, let's get into Excel and see how we can easily calculate these statistics using the built-in tools. I am in MS Excel and I have a sample of data in my Excel to perform the descriptive statistics over. There is an amazing feature in Excel that many people are not aware about is a data analysis tool pack. If you have not come across this word, the data analysis tool pack in Excel is an add-in in that provides advanced data analysis tools for statistical and engineering calculations. It simplifies the complex data analysis tasks by offering the built-in features to perform various statistical tests and data processing without needing to write formulas manually. So we need to ensure first if we have activated the tool pack correctly. So for that, go to File, then Options, and then Add-ins. Inside Add-ins, at the bottom we have Manage, and where you make sure you have selected the Excel Add-ins, and then click on Go. And then in the checkbox, make sure you have chosen the Analysis Tool Pack option, and then click on the OK button. Now when you see the topmost bar in the data bar has a data analysis button. Now we are all set to perform the descriptive statistics. To perform this, I will click on this data analysis button and from there I will choose the descriptive statistics option and select OK. Now in the input range here, we need to enter the range of cells containing your data. For that, I will click on this upper arrow and highlight the cells containing my data and press enter. The next option is grouped by depicts how your data is arranged in your sheet. If it is arranged in the columns just like mine, you can obviously choose columns and if it is arranged row wise then you go for rows. If you have levels on the first row of your data, you can take on the checkbox here labels in the first row. I don't have that, so I will skip this. Then if you go for the output options, this is where you want your descriptive statistics result to be returned. The first option that is output range is where you can specify a particular cell in this sheet only where your result to be returned. Second option is new worksheet that will answer your descriptive statistics in a completely new worksheet. The third option is new workbook will enter the result all together in a different Excel file. I want to enter my data in the same sheet here. So I'll go for output range and I'll choose somewhere here and I will press enter. Underneath I have various options available. I will tick all of them and don't worry I will explain each in more detail. So go for OK. And here you go, you have got the whole descriptive statistics over here, mean, standard deviation, and more. But before we do unlock your career in data analytics with Simply Learn's Data Analyst Certification course, this comprehensive program in collaboration with IBM covers everything from SQL, Python, and R to data visualization tools like Tableau and Power BI. You will work on the real-world projects, attend live sessions with industry experts, and earn certifications from both Simply Learn and IBM. Start your journey with hands-on learning, master the latest tools, and boost your career with industry-recognized credentials. Enroll now and take the first step towards becoming a skilled data analyst. Check for the course link in the description box below and pin comments. Now moving on, the first value we got is the mean. Basically, it is the average of all the data values. The mean is actually the sum of all the data points divided by the number of the data points available in the sheet. It tells you the central value of the data. 
you can separately calculate it in Excel using the function average. Now moving on, we have the second one which is standard error. It is nothing but the measure of the variability of sample means in a sampling distribution of means. If you want to calculate the standard error separately in Excel with the formula standard deviation divided by the square root of count. Now moving on, we have median. In short, it is the middle value when data is sorted. If I elaborate it, then the median is the middle value in a data set when it's ordered from smallest to the largest. If the number of data points is odd, it's the middle number. If it is even, it is the average of the two middle numbers. Separately, you can perform this in Excel by using the function median. Now we have mode. It is basically the most frequent value. Rather, it refers to the value that appears most frequently in a data set. We can perform it separately in Excel using the function mode. Next, we have a standard deviation. The standard deviation measures the spread or dispersion of your data. A higher standard deviation means the data points are spread out widely, while a lower standard deviation means they are close to the mean. You can perform this by using the function STDV. Now, coming to sample variance. Variance is the square of the standard deviation. If it gives an idea of how data points spread out from the mean but in squared units. To perform this, you need to use a var function. Now, we are going to kurtosis. Kurtosis measures the tailedness of the data distribution. High kurtosis means more outliers of the heavy tails, while low kurtosis means the data has fewer extreme values, describing the higher kurtosis and the lower kurtosis. Next, we have skewness. Skewness measures the asymmetry of the data. A positive skew means the data is skewed to the right, more lower values, while a negative skew means the skewed to the left, that is, more higher values. Now, moving on, we have range. Range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum values in your data set. The maximum value we have over here is 90.23, and the minimum value we have is 11.67. So the difference is 78.56. To find out the minimum value in the Excel sheet, use the function minimum. To find out the maximum value in the Excel sheet, use the function max. Then coming to sum, as you all know, sum is the total addition of all the values in your sheet. We can calculate sum separately by using the function sum. Then we have count. This is the total number of values in the sheet. In my case, it's 20. It will vary in everyone else. Then we have the largest. The first written in the bracket denotes the first largest number that is 90.23. If the number would have been 2, it will denote the second largest number. Same goes for the smallest. The smallest number in my case is 11.67. Last but not the least, we have confidence level. This is the number we need to add and subtract from the mean. The addition of the CL and mean is greater than 95% of the CL. The subtraction of CL from mean is lower than 95% of CL. So guys, that's a wrap up. I hope this has helped you a lot. Do let us know if you have any questions regarding this in the comment section below. Do like and hit the subscribe button below. I will see you in the next video for sure. Till then, keep learning. We'll simply learn. Thanks for watching. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.